Nancy Grace had another ridiculous debate about marijuana on her show. Let's watch. Norm Kent, when you hear a story like this, where the guy is high on a legal marijuana cookie, how can you continue to insist that pot be legalized? And I'm not talking about uh, medical marijuana. So don't start up with that. I'm talking about recreational marijuana. Because, Nancy, I'm not going to let the isolated stories you drag off the Internet impact and affect the millions of millions of Americans who use marijuana responsibly and do not impair or impact society negatively. Norm, Norm, You're the you one who's sending out that, the bad message. You stated that we dragged this off the Internet when actually that's a police 911 call that you just heard. So are you suggesting that somehow it's not real because it was written about on the Internet? Are you saying the 911 call is not real? No, I'm saying your argument is not real because you take isolated instances of aberrant behavior and try to make them standardized for really? all marijuana users. And okay. once and for all, Nancy, have you no conscience? When will this stop? When will you own up to the fact that millions and millions of Americans can light up a joint and have been since the age of Woodstock without impairing? Families uh, okay, you know what? Recklessly I was really just people. looking for an answer to the question, but obviously you're stoned. Um, Dr. Drew, I want to hear your thoughts. Well, I, you know, the, the, the story you, I agree with Norm, actually, believe it or not. The, the story you dragged out about the oh, man eating the marijuana cookie could just as easily be a drug withdrawal syndrome from the prescription drugs he was taking. In fact, the cannabis may have just been incidental. Now, I'm not saying cannabis is not associated with psychotic episodes. I'm not saying that the forensic pathologist is not right. There are human consequences from this drug. But that has nothing to do with the yeah. argument about whether Dr. it should Dr. be legal or illegal. Dr. It's Dr. just the facts Dr. about Dr. the relationship Dr. with the drug. Dr. Drew, Nancy, Nancy. I really appreciate Dr. Drew on call. I, I do. I'm a big fan. But you're in our house now. All right? So you can't just throw out a that fact means you like, don't get to talk. Uh, okay, Norm, just try to get it out of your system so I can address Drew on this. Dr. Drew, you can't just throw out a fact unless you have backup for it. Now, do you have Such any as? evidence? that this man that just guns down his wife in front of his children was having withdrawal from some other drug. In the police report that you say is the factual matter that you've taken off the internet, there were empty pill bottles found in his room. And the fact right. is, he may have, there's a common thing right now is that people are being dismissed from their medical care because they got, get carried no, away Drew, with their opiates and their benzodiazepines. They go into withdrawal. And in fact, they use pot to try to deal with the withdrawal from the, from the prescription med. Okay, I, I, I appreciate where Drew is headed. But the facts govern this case, Dr. Arnall. There's nothing in this father's bloodstream but pot-related but, but, substances. But, Nancy, that's very much my point. I was All talking the drugs to Dr. would be Arnall. out. He would be in withdrawal because everything is out uh -huh. of his system. He would and necessarily... So actually, that makes my case. Actually, the fact that there's nothing in his system, there's no makes suggestion... Makes the case for withdrawal. Makes the case for withdrawal. Withdrawal only happens when everything's out of the system. Well, Where were the pills at his bedside? Why isn't genuine. that still in his bloodstream? You know, ridiculous. Dr. Arnold, I see this all the time. Dr. Arnall, uh, you, you've really poured gas on a flame here. She got destroyed. She's really in a position that she shouldn't be in. Like, she is horrible at her job. I mean, it is mind-numbingly stupid the arguments that she makes. And it's clearly an act. I'm not saying she doesn't believe the garbage she's spewing. She probably does. But it it's all seems like bravado, and it's all over the top. And look, man, even if everything she said is true, and it's not, let's be clear here, I certainly don't believe it is, but even if everything she said was true about how Pot made this guy kill his wife, yada, yada. Those stories exist with alcohol times a trillion, and nobody talks about, you know, we should probably ban that again. 
And to try to craft public policy on one guy did one wrong thing, maybe or maybe not because of marijuana, uh, therefore ban it. What about the 99.9999% of people, the uh, 4,372,964 people who they'll smoke some weed, watch a movie, and then go to sleep? What about those people? There's no consideration for those people under the law? But see, that's not rational. That doesn't make any sense. And when you break down the facts about marijuana versus alcohol, take it from somebody who, I don't smoke. I've smoked in the past. I don't smoke anymore. It's not my favorite drug. I prefer alcohol to marijuana. But when you look at the data, you find out very quickly that at marijuana, there have been a grand total of zero overdoses in human history. Alcohol, there's been many overdoses. People overdose all the time. People get alcohol intoxication uh, all the time, or alcohol poisoning, I should say, all the time. When it comes to marijuana, most of the time, with most people, it just relaxes you. That's all it does. Nobody smokes weed and then says, let's get into a bar fight. They smoke weed and they're like, okay, where's my recliner at? Where's my recliner? And goddamn, I'm hungry, order a pizza. And also, what Nancy has no answer for, because she hasn't thought this deeply into it, is when you ban marijuana, or any drug for that matter, you strengthen the drug gangs. Where do you think the mafia got all their power from? Back during the Prohibition days, when alcohol was banned, there was this massive opening in the marketplace, and that void was filled by the Mafia. They provided all the illegal alcohol and they got incredibly rich. And then that, of course, led to more violence and more crime. You see this today with marijuana and with other drugs. 60,000 people, over 60,000 people, have died on the border of the U.S. and Mexico because of a literal drug war. We have made these drug cartels behemoths. They're so strong, there's a giant narco state in Mexico. The drug gangs are more powerful than the state. Because since we've banned drugs, we've given them a monopoly, so they get all the money, and then they take over. So, she has no clue about the economics and the political situation surrounding prohibition and how much it hurts people. And you see that when she gets put in a corner, what does she do? She says, you're stoned! You made a good point, therefore you're stoned. Or Dr. Drew made a point that I can't respond to, so... You're pouring gasoline on the fire. I don't even know what that one means, but see, when there's people who are effectively arguing back against her, you see how there's no logic to back up her arguments.